Welcome back to the Jeff Curley Show. This is uh, this is the final segment, and I and I've really been looking forward to this this guest. Uh, Larry Carpenter and I have only known each other for a couple of months. Uh, I am so inspired by him. Larry Carpenter was raised in the Smoky Mountains of North Carolina. He came to Dallas in 1981 to attend a Zig Ziglar Born This Way event, and it changed his life. Welcome to the Jeff Curley Show. Thank you, Jeff. It's a pleasure to be here. I have a great respect for you. I want to do a shout out to. Uh, Jean Ziegler this morning, Zig's mm. wife, Tom, Cindy, and Julie. I love them. Jody Diane for her inspiration. And my pastor, Dr. Jack Graham. I'm wow. so proud of him. Wow. And lastly, I want to thank Mike for being with me here this morning. He's my bodyguard and a great friend. <laughs> Not every guest on the Jeff Curley Show comes with their own bodyguard. I'm, I'm impressed. I'm very impressed. So uh, let's talk a little bit about Zig Ziglar. Uh, I, you know, both of us uh, uh, were, knew him, were very fond of him, and uh, he passed uh, uh, a couple years ago. But his legacy lives on, doesn't it? Yeah. Zig was quite a man. He truly walked what he talked about. He was the most consistent man I've ever met. In 1981, I came to Dallas to attend my first Born to Win, and that's when I met Zig for the first time. I had dinner with him and Gene that very first night. They invited me to go out to eat. Friendships flourished, and by 1983, I had sold quite a few of his I Can programs and put them in elementary and high schools in North Carolina. I continued to attend Zig's biennial workshops and was invited to come out and interview for a job. I was not hired. But uh, Ziegler saw a bigger picture. But I t- did take their advice, Jeff, and I started to college full-time and remained in Dallas. I, t- I did uh, utilize Zig's goals program, put it under my pillow. I worked his goals program every night. That allowed me to graduate from Dallas Baptist University, a four-year university, in just three years. Now, a quick story about Zig is I finished my sophomore year of college, Southwestern Book Company had approached me about selling books door to door. They were trying to recruit me. So I went and counseled with Zig and Jim McEachern about this opportunity. I write about this in my book, but one of the key personality traits that leaders seem to develop is how to make the right decision at critical times. Zig suggested that I not only consider selling books door to door, but he thought that I must. And that shocked me. I wasn't excited about it at all and uh, had my own ideas what that involved. He pointed out to me that by then I had read over 100 books on sales, personal growth and development, the Bible and bibliography on Andrew Carnegie, Empire Business, powerful book. Sig says, Larry, you got a lot of head knowledge where you've read and acquired this knowledge, but I'd really like to see you put it on the line, go out and put these sales skills into play. And secondly, even more important, if you'll accept this challenge, I'm certain that you're, you will forever lose fear of people and the fact that you might carry a fear of being rejected by anyone. The book selling will help you eliminate that. So uh, Zig was right. Uh, I went out for 11-week selling season, and I managed to finish sixth out of over 2,200 first-year salespeople. Oh, my goodness. I tell you, as a bonus to listening to his advice, following my door-to-door sales success, I was able to interview and accept an offer with Herschel Forrester here in North Dallas in commercial real estate. Now, you know Herschel was an old pro football player for the Cleveland Browns, All-American, tough guy. And Herschel was a springboard that allowed me to earn millions of dollars later in commercial real estate. Uh, It's funny because Zig came up to me later and said, aren't you glad we didn't hire you? (laughs) And we instead encouraged you to go to college. And uh, I acknowledged that. I said, yes, sir, but I'm still looking for a way to help you achieve your goals. Later in my life, he allowed me to do something for him. And I'm uh, glad that I could. So many stories about Zig. He had a way of saying the right thing at the right time. The last story is very quick. Uh, I remember uh, uh, after a big audience appearance, Zig was speaking in front of several thousand people, and I went up to him very sincere, and I said, Zig, I often pray that God would take 
years from my life and give them to you because of the impact you have on people. And as only Zig could say, very humbly, he said, Larry, we worship a God that doesn't have to take from you to give to me. He knows the number of years you need to accomplish your goals and purposes, and he'll give me mine. It wasn't long after that, Lori uh, Majors called from his office and shared with me that Zig wanted me to write the forward to what would become his last book. It was very humbling. Zig and I laughed together. We cried together. We made a lot of money in our own entities. But uh, this was a man who could have had the President of the United States write the forward to his book, and I knew that. Wow. You know, one of the things that impresses me about uh, Zig, even today, is that he never forgot the people who uh, shaped his life. Uh, when he was giving a tour of his office, he would always start with kind of his his wall of inspiration. Uh, his wall of fame. His wall of fame. Well, why do you think he did that? Well, Zig, uh, I think if he was here today, he would tell us if you had to net it down to two principles in life, or two words for that matter, he would say, be giving, giving, and forgiving. Now, those people had given to Zig, and he had a grateful attitude toward those people, and they made an impact on his life. You know, through Zig, I learned that the only difference in the Larry Carpenter today versus five years from now will be the books I read and the people I meet. Yes. Books you read, people you meet. And uh, boy, is that powerful. That's why I go out and seek sources of inspiration like you do, Jeff. Sources of inspiration don't come to us. If we wait on that, we're going to miss a lot of what life has to offer. So I make it a part of my regular routine to go seek those sources of inspiration. Well, you, you t you're a very inspirational uh, person in my life. I, I absolutely look up to you. And, and we, we talked a little bit about bucket list. And, you know, it says in the Bible that we're not promised tomorrow. And, and so uh, what do you, what's your advice to the person who is listening to the show who says, I want to check stuff off my bucket list? How do you get started? I mean, uh, there's an old saying that there's a one-day novel. I'm going to write a novel one day, and yes. one day never happens. Yeah. So if you're, if you're one of those people who is just putting off, um, you know, I'll do this when, when this happens, what, 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 what's your advice? Well, the whole topic of bucket list is something that's very close to me. I have kept and uh, added to my bucket list for a number of years, probably over 10 years now. I've checked off probably at least 25 of the larger goals of my bucket list. Includes parachuting at 10,000 feet. <laughs> and there's no way to prepare for that adrenaline rush, I'll tell you. I checked it off, though, and uh, riding a Harley Davidson from the East Coast to the West Coast. Put my foot in the Atlantic Ocean at uh, Wrightsville Beach where the Wright brothers flew that first flight and went all the way across the country to San Diego. That was a blast. My newest goal, I want to visit the seven modern wonders of the world, and I've given myself two years for that. I think the significance of a bucket list is tied to the movie, Bucket List. Where has there ever been a better movie? Morgan Freeman and Jack Nicholson. Yes. What a movie, and I bet I've watched it personally 50 times. But the, there's so much psychology in that movie, and one thing's I have learned about leaders and very successful people. The difference between the rich and the poor often is wealthy people have a long-term perspective about daily life. Poor people are those that are in trouble with addictions or challenges. They often have a daily perspective. All they can do is try to make it through the day. Yes. Harvard's done studies, or some writers is tracking this, and I find this very interesting, uh, the importance of long-range goals. If you think about it, it makes sense, doesn't it, Jeff? Yeah, absolutely. And you've traveled the world. What have you learned as you've gone to different pockets of the world? Are, they, uh, are you inspired by people and, and their spirit as you, as you travel the globe? I am inspired, and uh, the more successful people I meet, like Truett Cathy, I had a conversation with Truett before his death. And uh, he reminded me of so many of these fundamentals that I believe are critical to one's success. I go around the country, and when I do speak, I was invited to go with Tom Ziegler to Cambridge uh, in England, and that was a great experience. 
But what I learn is these people need the same balanced life to feel totally complete and to feel totally uh, that they're finding their purpose in life. Let's talk about your speaking career because I'm excited for you as you uh, really step out into another area that's on your bucket list, which is sharing your sharing the wealth that you've that you've accumulated over the years. And, and by wealth, I mean your your emotional wealth, your spiritual wealth. Yeah. Well, Jeff, thank you. And uh, I have saved or tabled my speaking career till I arrived at a point I felt like I had credentials and really something truly valuable and worthwhile to share with people. Michelle Prince here in North Dallas got a hold of me and helped me realize, Carpenter, you've got seven books that you can write with authority. Uh, for example, uh, in my book, I'll, clu- I'll include some conversation about finances. My best uh, financial investment was taking $50,000 investment. I created 60000 a year income for seven straight years and then sold that investment for a million two. Wow. And uh, so I've had a goal since college to require at least a 35% minimum internal rate of return on each of my real estate transactions. And I've achieved those goals over the years hundreds of times. I've owned over 100 pieces, 100 tracks of Class A commercial real estate. So I can write about that and share that uh, information with people. But as I travel... Everywhere I go, the things that are in common is the mental, physical, and spiritual balance. And if we're not balanced in those three areas, we're going to be hurting somewhere in our personal life. Okay. You, if you need to get a hold of uh, uh, Larry, you reach out to him at carpenterlr.com. Carpenter L- L- lr.com is his website and unfortunately we're out of time but can you come back sometime i'd love to and that email is lrc at carpenter lr.com jeff thank you and i look forward to doing some projects with you and helping you achieve something on your bucket list i'll see you at the top